Hi, everybody. Welcome to our first uh, seminar in a, in a long while now, uh, How Solar Works for You. Uh, we're super excited tonight. We're going to, uh, well, first of all, sorry, I'm Carla Bruni. I am the Preservation and Resiliency Specialist with the Chicago Bungalow Association. Um, and tonight we're going to learn how Illinois is leading the nation and offering solar power incentives to homeowners. We're joined by Bijere Morrison and Ben Janin from Sunrun, and they're going to break down how solar works for homeowners, address common misconceptions about solar, and introduce two solar incentive programs that are happening right now. Um, uh, just a few things about how we're going to run things tonight. Uh, maybe you've been through this before, but just as a refresher, um, our chat is going to be disabled. So please don't try to write anything in the chat, but the Q&A will be open. So if you have any questions that come along the way and you want to just pop those questions in there, I'm going to be going through them and taking a look at them throughout. We might answer some along the way if they're more general, um, but generally speaking, we're going to save all of those for the end where Bijere and Ben are going to be here to you know, answer them. We're going to save 15 minutes at the end. We're going to get through as many as we possibly can in that time frame. Um, we're also going to be recording this tonight. We're recording now already. And anyone who signed up for this is going to be receiving that recording in an email uh, sometime in the next few days. So take, you know, keep a look out for that. It's also on Facebook Live, so you can go to our Facebook page and check it out there. Um, and be sure to check our website for uh, the additional seminars. We keep adding more and more seminars for the season. So go to chicagobungalow.org to see what we've got coming down the pike. In the meantime, let me introduce our speakers more properly now. Um, Bijere Morrison's been, joined us before. Uh, Bijere entered the solar industry in 2019 and joined Sunrun's dynamic team as the Solar for All program manager. For over a decade, she served as an educator and college counselor at a high school in the South Shore community. There she drove the school's college enrollment to its highest rate of 86% and persistence to 72% up from 36%. Now as a solar advocate, Bijere brings her passion and relentless pursuit of excellence to empower environmental justice communities by providing a path to make solar energy accessible to all. Bijere holds a certificate in solar photovoltaics from the North American Board of Energy Practitioners earned at the Chicago Urban League through the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, CJA, and as a member of the BIPOC Birdwatchers out of the Chicago Audubon Society. Most of all, she is a proud mother of a freshman at Whitney Young High School. Benjamin Jonan uh, entered the solar industry in January of 2020. His primary focus is helping to protect the environment so we can all enjoy it for centuries. Originally from Woodstock, New York, he spent time traveling the world, hiking and scuba diving. These experiences have been a driving motivation to help protect what we can from further destruction. Prior to working for the solar industry, he was in the roofing industry and has a great depth of knowledge with how solar will help protect and lengthen the life of your roof. So without further ado, I think we can go ahead and jump into the presentation tonight. And again, just a reminder, don't put anything in chat. I know people keep joining. Um, be sure to put any questions in the Q&A and we'll answer those all at the end. We'll have a good 15 minute session to get through as much as we can. Thanks. All right, Bijre, you are muted. I think, can everybody see my screen now? Yep, we can see it. Okay, perfect. All right, Bijre, whenever you're ready. You're muted. There we go. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Chicago Bungalow Association, for having us this evening. Um, my notes just disappeared, so give me one second. I know I want to thank uh, Mary Ellen, Gillian, Carla, and Angela for helping us get here this evening. Um, and thank you all for welcoming us, having us in your home tonight. 
I know you could be doing lots of other things, but learning about solar and helping our planet is a phenomenal way to use your time. So thank you, thank you. I wanna get started uh, by telling you what we're gonna be doing tonight. So the first part of our presentation, we are going to talk about how solar works. And the second part, we're gonna talk about how it works for you. So before I get into that, uh, Ben, let's talk about Sunrun. So Sunrun is the number one residential solar provider in the country. We are in over 22 states and we got to Chicago and Illinois in 2017. I'll talk to you about how and why in a second, but we have over 660,000 customers nationwide and we've been in business for over 15 years. Uh, we have partnerships with Costco, Home Depot and Ford. And I wanna ask everyone tonight if they have seen any of our retail team in those places. So if you've seen someone in Costco in Home Depot that works for Sunrun, please put it in the chat or the question and answers. You can just say yes or no. If you have it, I'm sure you will after tonight. So this is a map, or it will be in a second, of one of our homes in Avalon Park that recently went solar. She's in the greenhouse. And I'm excited about this because when I first started in 2019, these blue bubbles were not there, okay? There were maybe five or 10. Now there are over 6,000 within 25 mile radius of Avalon Park. And I promise in a couple years, this whole map is gonna be covered in blue because people are going to recognize the power and the benefits of solar and Sunrun is gonna make sure we are there. Okay, so I talked about why Sunrun is here in the state a little bit earlier. And one of those reasons is because of the incentives that we have. So Sija and Fija, uh, one of the reasons why I'm in the industry right now is the Clean Energy Jobs Act and the Future Energy Jobs Act. They're basically both designed to motivate consumers and politicians, everyone in the state of Illinois, to get us to clean energy 100% by 2050. So this is deliberate policy that is helping our climate and making the workforce and clean energy uh, equitable. So a second question I have for everyone tonight, if you can think of some ways that you already utilize the sun and its power right now, type it in your chat. This is so hard because I'm not in front of an audience and I don't know what you're saying, but my guess is that you use the sun to warm your homes maybe sometimes. I use them to grow my plants, but the sun is powerful and we use it all of the time. Okay, so as we heard, our solar consultant Ben has worked for Sunrun for two years. He's gonna break down how the grid tied system works um, and about the Illinois Shines program, which is one of the programs that we offer at Sunrun. But before he does, we're gonna take a listen to one of our Chicagoland reps. His name is Michael Palma. And after that video, Ben is gonna start talking about how solar works. So get your pens and paper ready. I love having the opportunity to sell solar to people in Chicago because this is my city. My favorite thing about working for Sunrun and having the opportunity to show people the benefits of going solar is the fact that I get to actually get to know these people. I get to build relationships. One of the most important things we can do with solar energy is expand access to it to everybody. You don't have to worry about anything, including repairs and maintenance, because we take care of it for the entire life of your agreement. You're going to have houses all over the city that are marks of honor for the fact that you're creating your own power. You're taking charge of your energy. This is a mark of future-oriented homes in Chicago. 
All righty, thank you very much, Mr. Palma. All right, my name is Ben. Uh, like I said earlier, or was said earlier, I've been around in the solar world for about two years now. Uh, my job is basically to come out to your home and show you how a solar system will interact with your, your home because each home here is very unique in what direction the roofs face, what type of trees you have, degree of pitch, things like that. So I really dive deep into what will work for your home uh, specifically. But on the surface, it's all going to work uh, very similar in terms of the behind the scenes things that you see here. So on the screen, we see uh, a mock-up of a home with some red arrows. And basically what I'm gonna explain next is how the energy will flow from the sun to power your home. So you can see at step one is, of course, the sun is producing light, which is then coming down onto the panels that we've added to your roof. The panels are then collecting that energy and transferring them down into an inverter. The inverters we use now are what are known as a, a micro inverter. So you won't physically see it on the side of your home as in the image, it will be underneath every individual panel. But we do want you to understand that that equipment exists. They are what is converting our energy from a DC or a direct current to an AC or an alternating current, which is what we're actually going to be using uh, in our home to power our lights and refrigerators, etc. From there, we come then off the roof to a, another meter that we will add to your home. It's about the size of a small backpack and it has a few different functions here. It is one, uh, your, your primary method for us to monitor your system because as uh, Mike Palma explained earlier, uh, our systems are maintained and repaired by Sunrun. And so we need a, a way to monitor to make sure your system is, is doing what it should be doing. And so that monitor allows us to do that. And then an also is our primary connection point to your current uh, utility grid, right? So in, in this example is ComEd in this state and, and everybody on this call should be uh, most likely is a ComEd, ComEd customer. So what's happening with this energy flow at that point? Our meter has connected with the ComEd's meter and we are sending and receiving electricity as we need it. So for example, uh, our energy is measured in what's known as a kilowatt hour. So think of gallon of gas, right? It's, it's just your unit of measurement for electricity. And so your home is using that as needed and then the ComEd meter will spin and tally those up for the month and they send you the bill. With the solar system, what's happening is you are now producing energy from your roof that needs to be sent either into your home and extra energy needs to be sent out onto the grid where you receive credit for it and then you can pull those credits back in as needed later down the line. So essentially, think of it as a bank. You're depositing kilowatt hours when the sun is out and you're not using that energy instantly and then you're withdrawing that as you need it. For example, right now it, it's dark out, so we would be pulling back uh, from the utility grid, or they do have the ability to roll over month by month by month, like the old cell phone minutes used to. Um, mm -hmm. And being in Chicago, we know from April to October is going to be our primary uh, production month, uh, because everybody here knows in January, the sun is out for maybe five minutes a day. And so we need to then evaluate and assess to make sure your system can produce as much as possible during that, that six month to eight month period in spring, summer and fall. How do we do that? How do we know what size system is appropriate? What we're looking at is your most recent ComEd bill, which will show us a bar graph that indicates how much energy you used. From here, we then evaluate what is feasible for your home for the available roof space versus uh, the amount of energy you're using. So next, what I wanna to touch on is the actual Illinois Shines program. There's two primary programs here in Illinois. One is Illinois Shines, which I will be speaking about, and the other is the Solar for All program, which Bijere will be speaking about. They are both have funding coming from the state of Illinois. The Illinois Shines one is a partially funded uh, program, and then the Solar for All is fully funded, uh, but they do have some very unique requirements uh, for each one. 
most people will fall into the Illinois Shines program, uh, but we do offer both. So we make sure we wanna touch on both of those. So Illinois Shines, the basics of it, I meet with you, I say, here is what the system will look like for your home. Here's all the warranties and guarantees, et cetera. If it makes sense, uh, you agree to work with us. We then schedule a time for our technicians to come out and go through an engineering and design process. And then we install your system and Sunrun will then maintain uh, and repair your system for the duration of the 20 year program uh, if uh, in Illinois. Of course, we have an entire uh, customer service line uh, as well as my cell phone directly. Uh, if any issues do pop up, you can always call us there. So the basics of it or the benefits of it are maintenance and repairs are included for 20 years. We also insure your system for 20 years. So your homeowner's insurance does not need to cover the solar system specifically. Of course, as I explained earlier, we will monitor your system. This is done so we, we can make sure your system's producing what it should be and make sure that there are no malfunctions with a specific inverter or panel. Additionally, when you go to move, uh, because 20 years is, is a good amount of time, there's a good chance you will move in that time frame. it's guaranteed to transfer to whomever buys your home. Right now, across, uh, across the United States, Homes with solar will generally sell somewhere between 15 and 18% faster than the home next door without a solar system on it. Mm. It's guaranteed transfer. So what does that mean? Uh, that means that we're not going to decline somebody from buying your home. We can't charge them a massive fee for transferring it over. There's two ways that happens. Uh, either a soft credit check, 650 or higher, uh, that is essentially the same thing ComEd will do uh, when a new homeowner moves in. Uh, or if they'd like to avoid that, they can pay a 250 one-time fee that avoids the credit check and counts towards uh, some of their monthly payments in this program uh, for their electricity. So they're not losing it anyway. It's, it's essentially just prepaying a little bit of their, their couple of months coming up. The, at the end of 20 years, you will have one of the four options lifted, listed on the screen here. Either Sunrun can remove your entire system at no cost, patch your roof and walk away. We can keep whatever panels, inverters you currently are using and move to an annual contract year by year, of course, making sure the system is operational. Uh, a normal solar system has about a 25, 30 year life on it, uh, but Illinois and ComEd do restrict us down to 20 years right now. You can, of course, upgrade to I don't even know what the technology will be in 20 years, but whatever that may be, you can upgrade to that latest technology and sign a new contract. Again, I have no idea what those will look like. Uh, or we can send a third party appraiser out. They will give us a fair market value for your system and you can buy the system outright at that point and keep it till it dies. Um, so you do have one of those four options or whoever is currently um, the title holder of your property uh, will have that option. A couple of other thing, uh, key points I want to make about this program. Uh, right now, Illinois has in law that adding a solar system will not increase uh, your property tax. Okay, um, so don't don't feel like adding a, a solar system that's valued at twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars is going to increase your property tax. Uh, and it does have uh, a built-in controlled rate for the twenty years, uh, so you're protected from the um, constant variable increases from ComEd as well. Some of the requirements for this program are the 650 credit score. It is a soft credit check. So if you're going through a refinance or something like that, it's not going to ding you in any way. It won't show up on your credit report. Uh, of course, you or um, somebody that is a title holder uh, is the one that that credit check would be, be run on or uh, a spouse is, is acceptable as well as, if, as long as um, they live in the home. And then of course, you must have uh, ComEd as your utility uh, at the moment and have access to your ComEd bill. Next, what we're gonna do is take a, a, a little look at this video. This video is really to outline the process from I come out to your home to your system is operational. What are the steps that happen in that, that time frame? Right now, this time frame typically falls between two and three months. It depends mostly on your specific jurisdiction and how long your permitting timeline and inspection uh, timeline. So they're the longest uh, hurdles that we face 
uh, right now, but they are getting much faster, uh, certainly much faster than four years ago. Um, so here we go. Going solar is not as complicated as you might think. Our Sunrun experts are here to guide you through the seven simple steps it takes to start running your home on the sun. We're excited to have you join the clean energy revolution. After meeting with your solar expert and understanding your family's energy needs, we'll design a system customized to your home. Let's get started. Step one, site survey. Our Sunrun systems are uniquely customized to fit your home and your specific energy needs. During the site survey, an expert Sunrun site technician will visit your home to measure, review, and finalize the plans for your custom solar system. Step two, design review. After the survey, we'll review any changes to our initial plan and make sure you're happy with the design of your system. This usually takes one to three weeks. Step three, city permitting. Once your design is finalized, Sunrun will handle all of the permitting and paperwork with the city, so you don't have to. Step four, system install. It's time to install your system. The average install takes about a day. We need you at the house to let us in, but then you can sit back and relax and we'll take it from there. Step five, city inspection. Once your system is installed, we'll schedule the inspection with the city. A Sunrun expert will stop by to ensure your new system is up to code. Step six, utility connection. We'll work directly with your utility to get everything connected. In some cases, you may need to install a new meter. Step seven, power on. Congratulations, it's time to flip the switch, sit back and start running your home on the sun. All righty, thanks guys. Bijere, you're gonna take over from here. Thank you, Ben. Okay, so that seven steps to go solar is the same for each program. I wanted to highlight that. So the only difference really between Illinois Shines and Illinois Solar for All is that Solar for All is designed for income eligible households. I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, in a second, but I have to say that I am so grateful and so pleased uh, with the state of Illinois for providing this opportunity to, for us. Um, it is amazing, remarkable. Um, I cannot get over how great it is. Um, I have over 100 participants when I started. Um, it took us quite a while to get the ball rolling, but it is now. Um, I did some math. The first couple years, I averaged about 40 participants a year. And in the month of February, we installed 20 projects. So that is only going to continue to grow. And I'm so excited to be a part of it and really just grateful that we have this opportunity here in Illinois. I'm um, going to piggyback on what Ben said. So from start to finish, most of our projects take anywhere from like one to three months. We do have a participant that was installed in 31 days. And I was like over the top excited about that because our first participants, it took us quite a while, like eight months uh, from start to finish. So that is a dramatic uh, improvement. Okay, so a little bit about our specific offer. There are uh, a few vendors um, in the Illinois Solar for All program, but Sunrun honestly has the best uh, offer. So the Solar for All program is designed for income eligible households to go solar at no cost, and it lasts for 20 years. The contract is the same as the Illinois Shines or a prepaid lease. Um, you do not have to pay for your energy. The energy that is produced from the solar system, uh, the way that Ben described, all of the energy that comes off of your home and into the grid and back to your house from the grid is absolutely no cost to you. As long as your income qualified and Sunrun approves your home, you will not pay for anything. I know uh, a, f a few years ago, bungalows were getting. Um, denied or I was going out to homes and I had to tell the residents or the participants that we could not install in their home and that is because they had a vaulted ceiling 
and we were unable to install at that time. But good news, we have changed that requirement and now we are installing on um, vaulted ceilings. In a second, I'm gonna show you one of the projects that was um, denied at first, but we were able to come back on and install. A little bit more about our offer. So there's no cost, not down payments. There's no monthly cost. There's no cost for your electricity and you get 100% of your energy savings. Um, this chart right here is for Cook County, but we are in Chicagoland, uh, wherever ComEd is right now, pretty much. I don't think we go as far as like the border, uh, but we are in all of the suburbs and in Chicagoland. So for a household with one member, you would need to earn less than $44,250. We determine that income based off of your enrollment in a program such as LAHEAP or PIP. Um, if you receive social security income, we can use that award letter to determine your income. We do not check credit. We do not look at your social security card or social security number. So if you know, or if you are a, um, a citizen that does not have a social security number, we can install your solar as long as you're income eligible. Um, often, uh, there's a lot of homes that have four members. So if you have four people in your household, all of you have to earn collectively less than 63,000. So our offer includes maintenance, installation, repairs, all of that. Sorry, Ben, I'm not, I wasn't ready. <laughs> we uh, so everything is included and you don't have to pay for anything as long as you're income eligible the same thing that been described in the Illinois shines program you get with our program uh, if you want to sell your home that is really exciting that you will get what did you say Ben 10 or 15 percent faster sale or 10 or 15 percent 15 to 18 percent faster Right okay, now. yes. So that's great. I was just talking to one of my participants who is thinking about selling her home and the realtor was really excited and was just like, this is amazing. What do you mean? The person that moves in does not have to have a credit check. The transfer is seamless. You just call our company and let them know who is on the new comment bill and they will sign the NIM and the program extends for the remainder of the contract. So as long as you're income eligible, you can get this no cost solar onto your home. All right, so this bungalow on the right um, has a vaulted ceiling on the third floor. And when I initially went to the home, uh, we were unable to install about five to six months later, I went back and was like, let's sign up, we can do it. And they were extremely ecstatic because they use a ton of energy. There are seven people in the household and we were able to put on 27 panels. And that covers about, if my memory serves me right, about 62% of their energy. So what that means is 62% of the energy that they use from the previous year moving forward will come from the solar energy they will be responsible for paying for, for the remainder just to comment. They're not gonna get a bill from Sunrun. All of the energy that comes off of their home into the grid is going to be no cost to them. The household on the left is a single family home with one person and she got 19 panels installed. There's a difference because of the energy usage, okay? I really love bungalows because the roof space is large enough to put enough panels on to get as close as we can to 95% uh, offset, which means the majority of their energy is going to come from the solar panels. All right, I wanted to take a look at the disclosure. This is uh, one of the steps that is different from Illinois Shines. And so Illinois Solar for All has consumer protections that are built in to make sure income eligible households are not taken advantage of. 
and that we follow proper procedure in order to get the state funding. So this is no cost to the homeowner, but Sunrun is definitely still getting paid and we have to follow specific uh, procedures in order to get that. One of them is to fill out this disclosure seven days before you sign the Sunrun contract. So let's dig into the contract a little bit. On the first page, it goes over cost, summary of cost and savings. As you can see, there is a $0 upfront cost and first year cost, $0. The whole entire time it's going to be $0. I have to emphasize that because I've worked with a number of people who just don't believe me and it is true. I thank the Chicago Bungalow Association for allowing us to use this platform so that we can share this information because it is just so outstanding and unbelievable, but it is true, okay? So it is $0 across the board. All you're gonna do is see savings. The smaller bungalow, the one with 19 panels, uses less energy, but she's still gonna get savings, right? So for the first month, she's gonna get $57 off of her bill. She probably only spends 65 or $70 a month on energy to begin with. So she's gonna have a dramatic decrease in her ComEd bill. The larger panels, the 27 panels on the household that use a lot more energy, those panels are gonna cover not all of the energy that they need, but they're still gonna see a dramatic amount of savings. So the first month they're gonna see about $150. And this is on average, like Ben said, April to October, the sun is out eight, 10 hours a day. And in the winter time, it's not as much. So we don't get an increase. You're not feeding the grid as much but you can still pull from the time when you were putting more energy than your home needs into the system. I'm gonna talk about some of our specific participants and what their comment bill looks like in a moment, but I just wanted to emphasize the fact that bungalows are often for solar for this reason. We can put a ton of panels on your house, but it all depends on how much energy you consume. So if you consume a little bit of energy, we can't put 27 panels on there. It's based off of how much you use and how much you need. A little bit more about savings and I wanted to reiterate what our offer is. So our Solar for All offer is no cost, period. No upfront costs, no ongoing monthly payments, 100% energy savings and it's for 20 years. The larger system is going to see over the life of their contract on, a high, on the high end, about $30,000 in savings, which is remarkable. I'm not gonna say that word anymore tonight, but it, it is. Okay, here is uh, the first page of the Sunrun contract. It's zero dollars. I just have to emphasize this. We see it over and over again. I'm gonna say it a bunch of times, but it is true. Um, this zero dollars per kilowatt hour to the right is how you know you're, you're not gonna get a bill from someone. We're an environmental company. We're not gonna send you a bill for zero dollars. That's a waste of paper and energy. So, Never are you, will you see a bill from Sunrun unless at the end of your contract, you decide to renew your system. At that point, you would start paying whatever the current rate is, minus 10%. Um, at the end of the contract, you, you will also be able to upgrade to whatever the system is at that time. The natural thing to do is just for Sunrun to come out and remove the system at no cost. So at no point will you have to come out of your pocket for anything. And I feel like I'm missing something. You can also purchase it uh, at the end of the contract. So if you purchase it, we will have a fair market value uh, third party come out to tell us 
what to charge you. It may be $10, it may be a hundred, it may be a thousand. I don't know, I'm not in the future yet. But um, I also wanted to emphasize, so we've got 27 panels on this house. The offset is 62%. And the next slide, we're gonna see the Avalon Park home. She's got 19 panels, but her offset is less. Mm, her offset is more, excuse me. So she's got close to uh, all of her energy needs coming off of her ComEd bill. At the least, I used to tell people $15 because there are certain fees that are just not going anywhere. There's a standard metering charge and there is a charge just to be a ComEd customer, right? So that is $15. $13.84 right now. $13.84, okay. So that is the lowest that we can get your bill down, but I have a video to show us to go into our, uh, this is a recent Sunrun customer. Let's take a listen to what he has to say. The sun, it provides light. So when I think of solar energy and that we're not using as much electricity because the sun is coming down on us, I, I think that's the way it should be. Here in Chicago, Com it goes up every year. And of course you have no control over that, but through solar energy, and knowing what I'm going to be paying out for electric, that all worked out. And so I'm really glad I did it. You know, our kids may be impacted, our grandchildren may be impacted in years to come because of what we did and did not do. And so when I think of clean energy, that's, as the young people say, that's what's up. <laughs> Okay, so I really love that video because of the emphasis on the future generations. And I got into this industry because I care about the planet. I care about earth and I care about having a home and clean air and being able to uh, use energy without having to like turn off my lights and conserve anything. But what are the reasons why you wanna go solar? Do you wanna go solar because you wanna save the environment? Like I just talked a long time about money and saving money, but is that the only reason to go solar? To me, it's not. So the smaller system will produce the same amount of, or will, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say this the same way. So her small system is like rowing 47 city blocks of trees. That's going to improve our environment. That's gonna make it so we have more clean air. That is a huge reason why we should go solar. And it's not just about saving money, it's about saving our planet and protecting our future. What are some ways that you can do that now? You can type that in the chat while I talk about some of our SFA Solar for All participant testimonials. So this I wanna highlight is not the norm. This is not what most people do. And when I first learned about this, I was like, what? I don't believe you, but I, she showed me and I did. So this is Marie Cunningham. She ran her AC all summer last summer and she paid $0 on her comment bill for seven months. So as soon as she turned on her system, her first combat bill was zero dollars. I didn't think that was possible. It was possible, I will tell you why in a second, but I want to talk about one of our, part nope, you were right, Ben. I wanna talk about one of our first uh, Solar for All participants. She was so patient with me and I appreciated her so much. We signed up in March, 2020, so right when COVID hit, and it took us about a month and a half to finish the application. She was installed in October and she got her PTO almost a year later. So in January, 
she was super patient and now she is seeing a $15 on average ComEd bill. She has 22 panels and her energy usage um, is high because she puts up a lot of Christmas lights in December. If she decides she doesn't wanna do that anymore or maybe put up a couple or use solar lights instead, her comet bill will be dramatically reduced, okay? And real quick, I wanna, PTO is permission to operate. That's when we actually have an active system once it's passed inspections. Yes, thank you. Okay, back to Ms. Cunningham and her $0 ComEd bill. What she did is what we all should do, Chicago Bungalow Association, if you utilize this membership well. Uh, she went and got her house weatherized after she gave us her ComEd bill and we used her usage, her current usage to build her system. So the offset was higher than what she needed after she went and weatherized her home. I hope that makes sense. But um, her timeline was a little shorter than the first timeline. We started in December and she was power turned on or she got PTO in about April. And then my next uh, participant is Ben's client. She's in Avalon Park and she started working with Ben in December and she has already been installed by February. So you can see how fast we are working. Uh, we have streamlined this program so that our uh, Solar for All customers are seeing the same amount of time from application to install. And I do, Bijere, I wanna add, I'm, I'm, and I'm going off the cuff here, but the home to the right uh, went through the Illinois Shines program and actually just got installed uh, this morning. So both of these homes sitting right next to each other now have solar panels through through both uh, of the programs here. Yes, that is a great point. Thank you for adding that, Ben. So this whole block, which is my goal to get the south side covered in solar panels, we are getting closer to it. Okay, we are at the misconception portion of the evening. I know that there are tons of misconceptions out there because I talk about them all the time. The most common one is that our solar photovoltaic systems work when common is out, right? We really don't have that many outages. I've lived in Chicago for 20 years. I have not been out of energy for more than you know, 10 hours total. Um, the only times I can recall not having energy is when Comet comes out to fix or work on the system. And that is the exact same reason why your solar panels will not work when Comet has an outage. And that is because you are basically a little power plant and you are supplying energy to the grid. And if an electrician comes in and does work, they will get electrocuted if your solar system is working. So we don't want that to happen. And we do, I do want to emphasize that that is a good thing. We use the grid um, as like backup as our extra, and then we get to feed off of it uh, during the nighttime or in the winter when we no longer have a ton of sunshine out. Another misconception that we have, um, is one of from Illinois Shines because I make sure everybody knows they're not paying anything ever. So it's zero dollars, zero dollars, zero dollars. Um, the third is that even though you don't think of Illinois as a sunshine state, like we actually have a better climate to harness solar energy than places like California, right? So our panels and our solar systems are better suited because of our climate they have a higher efficiency than they do out in California because it gets hotter out there. So those are just a couple misconceptions that I wanted to cover tonight. 
If you have any more, please feel free to put them in the questions and we will go over them. I think we are wrapping up. We might have one or two more slides. Yep. So if you are interested, and I'm, I have to emphasize, like we can't give you anything specific because we need to see your comment bill. We need to know your usage. We need to know your roof space. We need to know if your home is solar ready, uh, which basically means it can take on the weight of the solar panels. You don't have any large code violations that will prevent us from being able to work your electrical system. Um, when it comes to solar for all, we do um, do a lot of mitigations at no cost to the customer to make sure that you can go solar. So we do a lot of sistering and we do a lot of meter can replacements um, and cold water grounding to make sure your home is safe and that your system is going to stay on your roof for 20 years. We don't wanna have to come out and remove it and replace it. Uh, we wanna do it once and that's it. If there is any time where your system is not working or if it falls below the production that we estimate, we will be automatically triggered and one of our team will, team members will come out and um, fix your system at no cost. I also wanted to emphasize at the beginning of this uh, presentation, I talked about how we are in Costco and Home Depot. Illinois Solar for All is not in Home Depot and Costco. So if you go up to one of our retail members and you ask them about Solar for All and they're like, what are you talking about? Don't think I'm telling you a story because it is real. It's just not through them. So if you are interested in Illinois Solar for All, please fill out, or Illinois Shine, fill out the form that we have on Chicago Bungalow's uh, website. You can take a picture of the scan here and it will automatically link you to Ben's form and we will get to you fast, quick, fast, in a hurry. Okay, so just keep in mind, every consultation will be unique and we will be able to tell you exactly what your system can produce for you once we have that consultation. And I want to okay. reemphasize the two the differences in the two programs. Solar for All is the income verification, has no cost associated with it at all. Illinois Shines is credit driven, so 650 or higher. Those are for the people that make above that income level uh, mm -hmm. there. And there is no cost upfront to install the system. It's partially state funded, uh, but you do have a monthly bill for the solar energy at a rate that is, is below what the current ComEd rates are. And we'll break that again. Again, that's a, that's a case by case individual uh, basis because mm -hmm. there's over a hundred different rate plan options with ComEd. So I can't tell you everybody saves 20% or 30% or 50% because it varies so drastically, mm -hmm. even just community to community. Sometimes you have a municipal tax, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're on this rate plan, sometimes you're on a different one. So that's why it's so critical uh, to have that individual uh, consultation and why we customize everything to you in your home because every situation is completely different. Even if you have the same layout as the neighbor next door, there may be five of you and then only two of them, right? Mm -hmm. Or you may keep your air conditioner at 69 degrees, they keep it at 74, right? All of that changes how much energy you're using versus what's possible for us to do because these are uh, programs provided from the state of Illinois. We are a licensed vendor for both of them, but we do have to play within the within the four walls of the sandbox that the state builds for us. So I mm -hmm. uh, just wanna keep that in mind. Everything is very individual um, per house, per family. I think that's it. I just came, something just came to me. I wanted to, um, to say that there are inspections that happen. I know that the seven steps shows that, but with the Illinois Solar for All, there are a few additional, uh, there are more inspections that happen. Um, and that is because it is fully prepaid by the state. So they just wanna make sure that we do what we say we did. All right, I'm passing it back over to Chicago Bungalow Association. Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you ladies. All right, thank you guys so much. That was great. Um, tons of information. Now we have uh, we have a lot of questions. 
Some of you guys definitely answered. I might ask you to just answer them again, just because people come in and out sometimes. Um, but we'll get through as much as we can. Uh, it looks like we're actually on until 7.30. So uh, I don't know if we'll get through the ever-growing number of them at this point, but we'll do the best we can. Um, uh, so I'll just start uh, going through these, basically. Um, uh, one person asked, are customers able to purchase their panels outright with Sunrun if they use programs like Solar for All? So I'll let you handle that one, Beatrice. Now, if you qualify for Solar for All, do you have money to pay for a system? Is the thought that I have in my mind. You can, but it would have to be after the fifth year. Um, Will, I know you addressed this, but will having solar panels increase the value of my home? In uh, the, the legal answer is no, we, we can't say it actually will, but it will help the home sell faster. And historically, we have seen homes with solar sell for more, but there is no uh, data that directly points to a X percent increase uh, with, with solar panels on your home. Okay. Um, how efficient is the energy bank? Are the credits returned to customers at an equal rate? Ah, sorry, just bumped me. Um, sorry, the um, got scrambled as people are putting more questions in. Um, but you get the idea. Yeah, I think we can. <laughs> how efficient so is that energy bank? Yes, the it's meter a, tracks it right then, so correct. it is tracked on their meter, it's on your paper, you can see exactly how much energy you feed into the system and that is credited on your comment bill so you can see it every month. It's everything is, is measured through kilowatt hours, not dollars and cents. So you're not mm -hmm. selling it to ComEd for seven cents and then having to buy it back at 16 cents. If you give one kilowatt hour, you get one kilowatt hour. Now that's right now, in the, that, that program or that process is called net energy metering or BJ early said NEM is the short for it. Mm -hmm. uh, ComEd can change that down the line. However, the state of Illinois has a, a law in place where once you're installed, if you're locked into that one-to-one -one rate now, you're grandfathered in forever, okay? Mm -hmm. They may change it five years as they get closer to, to their goal, right? They may change it. So for example, Nevada, I believe is 10 to eight right now. So if you send 10, 10 kilowatt hours, you only receive credit for eight back. And that's because Nevada is a lot more saturated. They're very close to what their energy goals are as a state and as a utility. Um, so they're starting to scale that back because they don't need that higher level incentive to, to have people uh, jump on board. Illinois is our newest state. We've been here for uh, about four years now. So they still need not only the financial incentive, but also that, that, that metering incentive. Other states, New Jersey, California, the state incentive is, is no longer there because the utility rate, uh, cost of utilities energy is now higher than it costs us to put a system up anyway. So we're just naturally uh, the, the cheaper option, right? In the state of Illinois, we still need to be propped up a little bit because 75% of our energy in Illinois comes from either nuclear or coal, which is the two cheapest forms of energy. Mm -hmm. The problem with both of those energies Coal is being phased out by 2030. That's part of the um, CJUS, uh, Clean Energy Jobs Act, which was in September. And nuclear, which is about 50% of our energy right now, is phasing out, okay? As the plants are aging, they need to decommission them. The one that is the longest life is the Byron plant in Rockford. That one has about 19 or 20 years of life left. Mm -hmm. As they age out, they're shutting them down. So we have six total. We're the largest nuclear state in the country. I know I went down a big rabbit hole that was not <laughs> kilowatt hour, but <laughs> compassionate. <laughs> um, okay, uh, did the Clean Energy Jobs Act renew Illinois solar renewable energy credits or SERCs? SREX, yes. Uh, Illinois, um, Sunrun monetizes those and then reflects the, the uh, that's what allows us to become below uh, what the comment rates are mm -hmm. in the Illinois Shines program. Uh, and then of course in the Solar for All program, that's essentially coming straight All to us that. because mm -hmm. they're paying. Yeah, they're paying for your system completely. Mm -hmm. uh, the state of Illinois. So yes, they they repassed that in September. Okay. 
Um, a lot of people asked, uh, they're concerned that they have flat roofs and they want to know if you guys can install on flat roofs and also uh, if you can install on two flats. Those often go together in the questions here. Sorry, no, not as of right now. We, and that's because we ensure uh, our products and flat roofs are kind of scary because there is no place for water to go and we're puncturing holes into your roof. And so. And we have a, um, we have a 10 year roof penetration warranty. Okay, so if the solar system causes a leak in your roof, we're responsible and with flat roofs, uh, with those types of materials and water pooling as Bijere explained, the company's not taking that risk on. Two flats are totally okay, as long as they have uh, you know, a pitch to them and have an asphalt shingle. Yes, there are and other approved vendors, I'm sorry Sunrun, that will do flat roofs, but we are not there. Now we will do a small pitch, okay? If it's a rolled comp roof, not rubber, rolled comp, uh, greater than 4.5 degrees, 4.5 to 9.5, uh, we will work with that material at this point, okay? So that flat roof category is a very gray area of what is considered flat and what is not flat. Roll to comp four and a half to nine and a half degrees, we will do. Right. And we um, do uh, another, there's also a, a bunch of questions in here that I noticed that are about the number of solar panels needed. Some people asked, do they, do they have to have the maximum number? Um, others asked if they could have them not on the roof, but on, you know, some sort of a berm, like either in the garage or uh, a carport. Um, so, yeah. Yes, there is a minimum five, but you do not have to maximize. So if we come back with a design that says you have 30 panels and you only want 15, you can decide that. We will also trench and uh, draw a conduit from your house to your garage. So yes, we will install on both places and you ultimately have the decision on what you want on your roof. Yeah, that, that's um, a big part of what I do. I'm, I'm the connection between you and the company. So the, really the only rules are minimum seven panels, maximum no more than 100% of your actual energy use over the last year. Mm -hmm. uh, within those boundaries, we can do pretty much whatever you want uh you know a, a garage or a separate structure again will will really become a space issue right um oftentimes garages with four roof surfaces are challenging for us uh, to get the seven panel minimum requirement on that mm -hmm. because the fire department does have requirements of space around every solar array so they can access that structure in an emergency and so that really limits our space when you've got four separate roof surfaces and we need to recalculate that uh, fire restriction for every single one of the four roofs. So is it possible? Yes, but again, it's, it's home by home by home uh, what you're looking for. I have often people say, I don't want it on the front of my home. Totally fine. As long as you've got the roof space available on the back of your home, uh, a non-issue. Mm -hmm. um, and what about tile roofs? Because we have some, some bungalows have those, have tile roofs still. Um, is it possible to install on those? It is possible. We do not do it in Illinois at this time uh, because quite frankly, there it requires a completely different racking system and a completely different set of installation skills. We don't have enough of them this, in this area for the company to put the money uh, into that specific roof type right now. Will that change in the future? Maybe, for example, we're starting to add metal roofs right now, uh, which last year we weren't doing metal roofs. We do a lot of concrete tile in Florida, California, right where it's all over the place down there. Um, but in Illinois, no, not, not at the moment. So hold tight, maybe soon. <laughs> um, okay, uh, there are also a lot of questions it looks like about uh, will, will the panels, two, two different things. So will the panels damage the roof when you install them? And will the panels themselves be damaged by weather and other things? And what do you do about that? Like it does, you know, do, does Sunrun come out and take care of that or how do they deal with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you fall below your annual production, we're triggered and we'll know that something is wrong and repairs are included. 
most panels are, I don't want to say they're indestructible, but you would have to get up there with a bat and like really go <laughs> at it to, to, to damage your solar panels. Like hail is not going to do it. Uh, rainstorm. Um, I had a customer that asked me one time if a plane flew overhead <laughs> and something fell off of the plane and landed on her solar panels who would be responsible and Sunrun would be responsible. And if someone like got injured from that, like we are gonna take care of all of that. Then you wanna oh, add And then from the, the wind, your wind question, uh, keep in mind 22 states, DC and Puerto Rico, we're installing these systems in hurricane territory. It's the same racking system that we're using here. They have very heavy wind ratings, 120, 140 mile an hour wind rating, I think something like that. Um, I don't have the photo accessible, but we have a photo of one of our homes in Houston, Texas. The entire home is in the middle of the street and all of the solar panels are still on the roof. So mm. once they're there, they're not going anywhere. Um, the racking system is a, a company snap and rack, uh, which makes a great, great product. Mm -hmm. And then what was the first part? There was another I think part. the question was, does the actual installation damage your roof? Damage. Okay. We will bolt through your roof into the rafter. So the short of it, yes, we are going to put holes in your roof. Mm -hmm. uh, we are using a marine, marine grade sealant that has a 50 year warranty uh, to seal that penetration. We use a racking system. So we're not attaching every single panel to your roof. We're attaching railings to your roof. And then we attach the panels to the railing. That limits the amount of holes uh, in your roof. But then keep in mind, we have the 10 year roof penetration warranty. So if there's a leak, uh, you're covered for the first 10 years. Mm -hmm. The racking system sits about three inches off the roof surface. It's designed to allow airflow so that we don't have uh, moisture buildup between the panel and the roof surface, which can create mold and mildew issues. Um, and so just to clarify too, just to go back, since we're still sort of talking roofs here, um, is it only possible then to install on asphalt roofs? And somebody asked about synthetic slate, which I'm guessing is also a problem the way that uh, the clay tile would be. Currently asphalt, road comp, and metal in Illinois. Is it technically possible to install on other roof surfaces? Yes, uh, Sunrun will not, uh, specifically in the state. We'll do concrete tile in other states. Um, they were piloting clay tile in Miami. I don't know how that went. Um, but there's certain roof surfaces, for example, a cedar shake or a slate tile. There's short of building the racking system while you're putting the roof up, it's near impossible uh, to install that without shattering the shingle uh, or the tile. Um, just to let people know, we have 90 questions. That's after. There's no way we're going to be able to get to them all tonight. Um, but the good news is that you can reach out to Bijre and Ben after this presentation tonight, and they can get to you. I just want to manage expectations. Um, we can go till 7:30, but uh, if you're putting questions in now, it, it likely we're not going to be able to get to them. Just so you know. Um, uh, we had a question: Are these systems at all dependent on the internet? Is there any no. connection? Okay. So, uh, they used to be, uh, but now we are, we're going to add, uh, you remember the image of the, the house has the, the meter that we're going to add. There's a cell phone uh, booster in there. So we're using the cell phone networks to, to monitor systems now. Great. Um, so password every time you change it. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, we have a bunch of questions of people wanting to know if it basically does it have to be tied into the grid or can it be tied into a battery? Has to, to be tied into the grid. Yeah, it has <laughs> to be tied to combat. Yeah. Um, let's see. Trying to find ones that are grouped so I can get to as many people as possible. Um, See, I think um, you can go to Home Depot and buy a system or buy some panels if you're really interested. Oh, we can learn how to build through the Illinois Solar for All uh, program. That's how I did it. If you're interested in learning how to put your own system together, but legally it has to be connected to Comet. Right. And legally a licensed vendor has to install it in the state of Illinois. So please, Ray, don't tell them to go to Home Depot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, 
<laughs> um, let's joke. see. Jokey joke. <laughs> Um, if a roof needs uh, to be repaired within the 20 year time period, or let me combine this with another one. If somebody wants to do some sort of modification, like add a dormer, do they, are the, can they just contact your, you guys and you'll actually remove them and then put them back? And if so, is there a fee for that? That's the only charge. And I really try my best to not have people do that. So we want to make sure you have gotten a new roof or a newer roof and you're not going to do any type of adjustments like that because that's when you have to come out of pocket. Um, other than that, I mean, you can if you want, but you just have to pay for it. And to piggyback on that, the roof will be inspected by the technician. That's, that's the second part after I meet with you. Everything makes sense to you on the surface. We sign some forms. Then a tech is going to come out. They're going to check your roof, your structure, and your electrical. And then our engineering teams are going to decide, is this a viable home, yes or no? Right now, one in four homes is 100% ready to go for solar. The mm -hmm. others need something or are straight disqualified. So we don't quite know everything until that happens. Um, mm -hmm. But it all depends on how old the roof is versus what type of shingle you have up there versus degree of pitch, anything growing over top of your roof, all of that type of stuff. If you're replacing for insurance, for example, hailstorm comes through in 10 years and your, your shingles are damaged, insurance companies often will cover that cost. I can't say they always will because not all of them necessarily do at this point. But just like if you have a satellite dish up there, right? Uh, there's actually a cost to remove that satellite dish and put it back. Uh, the insurance company will cover that satellite dish removal uh, in the event of a weather related um, roof change, uh, but there is always a cost for panel removal and reattachment. Sunman will do the work. It's just who's paying for it, either your insurance company or you, if you're changing your roof from mm -hmm. blue or something. All right. Um, uh, if the solar panel, and this won't happen, I'm sure, but if the solar panel provider goes out of business, what options would the homeowner have? Um, Sun runs the largest in the industry. We are publicly traded as well. Okay, so we are we have a bunch of investors backing us up. Odds are, if Sun Run were to start going that direction, we would be bought out by somebody else. Okay, so for example, Solar City was bought by Tesla. Mm -hmm. Vivint was bought by Sun Run. Blue Raven was bought by Sun Power. So that's what will most likely happen. And then the, that company that purchases Sun Run uh, is responsible for honoring whatever contract Sunrun still has with those mm -hmm. customers at that point. Okay. Got um, business, we got bigger problems. Something else is going on in the world. Um, can, so somebody wanted to know if the solar, if solar can be used to heat water for radiators and or the hot water tank. So if it's mm, electric. Yeah, if it's electric, if it's gas, mm -hmm. then of course you're using gas. Uh, but if you convert it to electric, Yes, after you've proven you need the energy to do so. So remember, we're using the last 12 months of usage. That's what we're restricted mm -hmm. to. So if you change to an electric hot water heater, an electric dryer, electric stove, yes, but we have to wait a year for you to prove that you need that extra energy before we can build a system for that. We can always build a system now and add a secondary system later on if you've proven you need the extra energy and you have the available roof space. Mm -hmm. With that, um, so with that, uh, so with that, all right, doing good. Let's hit a clump where we answer them all. <laughs> um, 81 to go. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem. Um, some of these are, uh, we've got a bunch from the same people, so I'm just want to spread it out a little bit here too. Um, so who repairs the roof if and when the system is removed? Is that also, would that also be a homeowner then? No, well, it depends on when, when the system is being removed, okay? So at the end of the 20 years, if you've opted to have the system removed at no cost, Sunrun is responsible. If you've chosen at year 20 or year five, as Bijere said, to purchase the system outright, you're responsible at that point for your system. So you're responsible for paying for the removal and then of course, repairing the roof uh, at that point. 
but if you're if you're operating under that 20 years I want it removed then Sunrun is responsible for um, the roof to make sure that it doesn't leak um, and if the roof on the house is on its last legs do we have to have the entire roof replaced uh, you know you would have to have for us, you would have to have what we call the solar plane. Okay, so wherever we're putting solar panels, that that roof surface would need to be replaced. From our aspect, the other side you can do as you please. I personally, as a an ex roofing roofing expert, would never recommend that. But I've seen it done. I've seen three, four, or five different shingles on the same the same home, home all on different roof surfaces but for, for our requirements it's it's you know if i we come back and say you need a new roof at minimum you have to do the roof surfaces that solar panels are on um let's see um so we have a few people asking about the cost for the illinois shines program and uh the best way to apply assuming they're not eligible um for the other program for solar okay. for all. $0 for us to install the system, and then you'll have a monthly payment below what your ComEd rate is now. What that savings looks like, will, as I explained right at the end there, will depend on what your current rate plan is, mm -hmm. uh, plus how much energy you need. So I can't give you a true dollar amount because if your current bill is $50, well, then your bill from us is never going to be 150, right? Because you just don't have the energy need for that number. So it's very specific. If you want the actual details, scan the link on the screen, put in your information, it'll come straight to my email. I'll then call you to set up a time where I can come over for 30 minutes or so, enter your information from your ComEd bill and give you real numbers at that point. Because it's not only based off of how much energy you're using, but your home itself. Where does these roof surfaces face? What's sticking out of them? What shade do you have? What direction? What degree of pitch? Too many factors for me to just blast out of. Dollar case by dollar. case, always. Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, uh, we have a couple of questions. Uh, people wondering about snow. Uh, so basically, do the panels still operate if they're covered with snow? I thought I covered that. I just had the yeah, image yeah. of the snow <laughs> on the panels. I didn't talk about the snow. So yes, the panels still work. Um, the snow will actually melt faster around where the panels are and white reflects the snow, the light of the sun more. So I'm not gonna say that it makes it a higher efficiency or anything like that, but they definitely still work when there's, as long as the, the panel can see the sun. Yeah, so if they're buried in three snow. feet of snow, no, they will not be actually producing in that moment. Right but our software is taking into account your historical weather data, okay? So we know where you live. We know your GPS location. Where is the sun in the sky relative to your home? How many cloudy mm -hmm. days do you have? How many sunny days in the year? And then keep in mind, we're on over 660,000 homes. We operate in not only Illinois, but New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Vermont, uh, Colorado, which all have heavy, heavy snow loads, okay? So we're monitoring all of those systems and we're well aware of how the system uh, is interacting. Uh, in the Illinois Shines program, we actually do have a production guarantee. Annual, annually, we're guaranteeing its production. And if we are dipping below 90% of what we tell you it's gonna produce in one year, we refund you money back. In the Solar for All program, there is no uh, production guarantee because you never paid any money, so we can't pay you money back for something you never actually paid for. But we're using the same software, so it'll still have the same, uh, same effect. Mm -hmm. So in effect, yes and no. Yes and no. Depends <laughs> on how much snow. <laughs> but that's why I said we, we are designing a system based off of your annual, annual usage because we're trying to capture as much as your annual usage as we can between April and October or, or November, right? And then build up those net metering credits, those kilowatt hours on your bill that will roll over month by month by month like the old cell phone minutes used to. And we use those credits in... November, December, January, February, March, when the sun's not out or it's buried in snow. Mm -hmm. For example, 2020, every system in Illinois produced more energy than we told the customers it would. would. So systems are generally designed to overproduce in the beginning parts of the, the 20 years. 
Um, I know this was touched on, but there's a lot of questions about it still, so folks might have missed it. Um, if there's a power outage, people want to clarify they, that they will or will not have power. You know, is there some backup uh, with the system? If you lose power from ComEd, you will still lose power because we're connected directly to ComEd's meter. So we can't, for the safety of the, elect, um, the, the, the linemen, uh, we have to shut down for their safety. I will touch on briefly, we do offer battery backup if you want that. Generally in this state, because our grid is very stable and the cost of the battery and the limitations of its tech, generally most people don't move forward with the battery. Uh, that's why we just generally don't touch on it. Do we have it? Yes, but we offer it because we offer it in other states like Texas, Florida, California, where their grids are either terrible or decentralized like Texas, or they're gonna be out for three weeks like in Florida. Uh, so it makes more sense in a state like that. This state, quite honestly, if I'm being very frank, I don't think the battery makes much sense in this state uh, personally. But it can't, because we, uh, we had one person, and I guess in Beverly, um, she'd mentioned that they lose power often. So she was wondering yeah, so if there was that option. So it, it, it's it good to not, know. And yeah. we will, that, again, that's, it, that gets very uh, technical in what do you want backed up and how do we, how does that work and do you have space and all of that stuff. So we do them for sure. Uh, definitely an option um, if you're losing power frequently. If you're like most of the combat customers and you're out for two hours a year, you know, then it doesn't quite make sense. But there are specific instances in Illinois that lose power frequently. That we What's going on in Beverly? Yeah, y'all need a. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, was, I yeah. Um, uh, so sort of an adjacent question: uh, Does my breaker system change with solar panel installation? Do you guys do any work inside like that? We will check it. If it's not up to code, then yes, we will tell you either you need a new panel or you need something, right? If everything's good to go, no, everything. Again, we're connecting through ComEd's meter. So in how you're using electricity in the home should not change. The only reason we go inside and check is because most jurisdictions in the inspection will come in and check as well. So for code reasons, we need to make sure everything is, is up to code. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm assuming uh, anyone who had that question is like, but do we have to pay for it? Do we have to pay for it? Um, so Depends. it would be on the customer to pay for that then if you needed that to be upgraded. Depends. If it's a minor upgrade, uh, oftentimes Sunrun will cover the cost. If it's an entire new electric panel, usually there will be partial. We'll usually cover part of it and they'll end up covering uh, the remainder as the homeowner. But that comes again after design and engineering. I come back with the finalized design and say, this is what it looks like. Do you want to move forward? No or yes. If you say no, we cancel everything out. No penalty. In the solar for all, we can't have any costs associated with that. So mm, I don't know how the best way to word this, but either we're going to come back and say, yes, your home is approved. Here's the updates we're doing. Or you need to do these updates before we can move forward with this program because we can't show any cost to you. Got it. That Got it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> um, if uh, what if a solar powered home is sold and the new owner the new owner's earnings are too high for the number of people in the house to qualify for the program? They got this the panels through. You're grandparented in, so as long as you are income eligible, whoever takes on the comment bill next gets the program. That's one of the the benefits of Illinois Solar for All. And I want to also touch on that. That income verification is only done once. Okay. Well, after your, your system is operational, that's it. Go make a million dollars next year. They're not going to check you again. It's for no. them. Okay. And this is only for homeowners, right? So two, two questions. One asked about rental. Um, and one asked about, and sorry if you covered this, I was looking at questions during some of the presentation too, so I missed some of it, um, trying to sort of thin them out a little bit, um, the duplicates, but um, so question about rental properties um, and also a question about businesses being eligible. My apologies, I did not cover this uh, clearly, but in order to qualify for Illinois Solar for All, you can be a renter your homeowner or the landlord has to approve. So they will sign the Sunrun contract and the renter will sign the disclosure in the Illinois Solar for All portion and be income verified. So yes, this program is open to renters and owners. The Solar for All one. Illinois, Illinois Solar for All only, yes. Yeah. 
Illinois Shines is homeowners only. And in terms of commercial properties, any any programs available through Sunrun? No. We are a residential, residential company. Home. Okay. Um, let's see. There can be a business on the first floor if it's like a two flat. But it has to be a residential meter and a residential comment bill. That's what, that's the key. Mm -hmm. And it can't say commercial on the title. Okay. Um, does solar release the home from being charged the ComEd distribution charge? What happens with the fees associated with the use of electricity going through ComEd? I know you touched on that, but that's also come up again. If, if your home produces all the energy from the solar energy that month, your bill will be $13.84. Customer charge, standard meter charge. All the other fees on your page two or the back of your ComEd bill are multiplied by how much energy you bought from ComEd. So if you've bought none from them, they can't charge you for that, okay? If not all the energy is able to come from the solar system, let's say you need 800 kilowatt hours, but we only gave you 600, you'd have 200 times whatever their rate is at that time, uh, which of course that can, will continue to increase um, often. Okay. Um, just so I'm sure I hit on this again, People are asking still, where can I apply? Where do I get an application? Are those um, addresses with your names after them at the end there? They can go directly to those links? Those links or scan or t shoot me a text, email, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. on here. Yeah, phone number. The ghostsunrun.com is just that, that QR code will bring you to that ghostsunrun.com for me. You can also, I'm sorry, for Illinois Solar for All, you can get income verified through Illinois Solar for All, the program administrator. So you can start there. If you are interested, it's IllinoisSFA.com and they will income verify you just to make sure that you uh, meet the qualifications if you don't want to talk to me or Ben directly. Right. Or we can walk you through that step by step by step if you prefer. Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, a few more roof questions too. I just want to get in here. There seems to be a lot of understandably like people who are like, eh, do I want these, you know, on my house? Um, so um, one of them is, you know, one person had said like, I think in maybe five years, I'm going to need a new, roof, a new roof. What should I do? Should I wait and hope the program is still around? Um, another person is putting a new roof on um, this spring, and they're wondering if there are any like considerations they should, you know, things they should keep in mind mm -hmm. while they're installing the new roof to make it sort of more solar panel friendly or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, we have people concerned about the orientation of their roofs. Um, if they're, you know, they're uh, yeah, east west, not north south, you know, um, is that an issue? Um, east west, north south, again, I'm going to evaluate home by home by home by home. Okay. South is obviously best because of our position on the planet. East-West is obviously very viable as well. North depends, depends on, on pitch, but I would not worry about that from your end. If you're interested, scan the link, I'll meet with you and I'll let you know what will work and will not work. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm very upfront. If I think a roof surface not gonna work, I'm gonna point blank say that roof surface does not work. Okay, um, I look at probably 30 to 40 homes a day just from Google satellite imagery and you know street views and all that type of stuff and figure that out. Uh, regarding the home that's getting a new roof this spring, keep whatever, as long as you're doing an asphalt shingle, I personally recommend architectural style. I think that's really all that they sell at this point. If you're interested in solar, we can still start your process now because remember we do have to get through the engineering phase plus the permitting phase. So basically at that point, you're just going to sign a document stating that, yes, I am taking care of the roof and it will be done before Sunrun installs the system. And if we're ready to go before your roof's done, we'll just put you on hold and, and wait until you tell us the roof is done. But you get through all of that mm -hmm. red tape, I guess, in the beginning, uh, rather than wait till the new roof's on and then still have to wait you know, six weeks or so before your system's installed. You can start that process. The five-year roof question, I would, my question back would be, how do you know five years? Uh, because roofs age very differently depending on what's happening, what's affecting them. So um, 
I know you may say, okay, I've got a 25 year shingle and I'm 25 years in, that doesn't necessarily mean you have five years left. That's case by case by case. I personally, if I've got five years left and if I had the cash, I would just replace the roof now, uh, but I would not wait five years because the rates for solar are going up every probably twice a year or so because the state is giving us less money over time as we install more more states or more systems and in five years i can't guarantee that that net metering will still be one to one most likely it will have adapted at that point um, so take the biggest advantage is obviously going to those who take advantage the fastest yeah. mm -hmm. um well we only have uh like two minutes left. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. We kind of covered that. Got four are there more. any? What are? Um, are there any really common things that come up or questions that people ask when you guys are talking to them that we've missed so far? And I want to also reiterate that to everybody on here that you can contact uh, Bijere and Ben after tonight, no problem. They're both super um, happy to field any questions we didn't get to tonight. Uh, you know, all their information is currently up on the screen. So just make sure you get that down in the next minute or two. Um, but yeah, I just want to see if we missed anything that was really, really critical that comes up often. No, I mean, we designed these presentations to hit on 98%. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and that other 2% y'all have already hit on uh, from my end. I think the only thing we didn't talk about is how solar panels extend the life of your roof. Uh, where mm -hmm. we put the solar panels, it's like an extra barrier that will make it last longer. Right, because you're not gonna have snow on them. You're not gonna have the ice on them. The sun won't be you know, uh, discoloring them and, and that thing. Uh, but if you guys do have more questions, like she said, feel free to scan this link, put your information or, 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 or the go sun run with my information. That comes straight to I, my email, so you're not going to be dumped into the company's call list. Okay, it comes straight to me. I'll call you directly, and I can answer. Again, I'm happy to just have a five, 10 minute question conversation over the phone if that's what you need, uh, or we can set up the appointment where we can really take a deep dive on your home specifically and see um, mm -hmm. what will work and what won't work. Also, if you guys have like smaller neighborhood uh, meetings, we will definitely come and talk. Uh, thank you, Chicago Bungalow Association, for allowing us to use your platform. We definitely appreciate it, and we want to spread the word. You know, Illinois Solar for All is, I feel like, first come, first serve, and I would love to cover the whole entire city, environmental justice areas in particular, with solar panels. I do always love your enthusiasm, Dijere, about the cost. You're always like, it doesn't cost anything. Like, I'm sorry, I'm like, it's just <laughs> like, it's uh, it's honestly it. our biggest hurdle is getting people to believe it. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I just love you guys. Um, I mean, I feel like it's, I don't know, it, it's too good to be true, but it is. So I have to be passionate and excited about it because it's, yeah. That's wonderful. Um, thank you uh, both so much uh, for all of this wonderful information. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. I'm sure you're gonna get uh, plenty of people with additional questions for you too coming through. So um, thank you for that as well and for being open and for all your time. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evenings and I'm sure we'll be in touch soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all you. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining Have us tonight. Good time. <laughs>